Let's welcome back to Midpoint, founder and president of the Center for Security Policy, former Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Policy, Frank Gaffney. Frank, let's turn overseas right now. Recent story that caught our eye here was that apparently the American government is now very afraid that China could actually take actions and take down the nation's power grid. Now, we've heard these stories before about the possibility of this, but in your experience and knowledge, how real do you think this threat is? I'm afraid it's very real, and unfortunately, it is not just from China, and it's not just from the kinds of cyber warfare attacks that uh, Admiral Mike Rogers, the commander of uh, U.S. Cyber Command and the director of the National Security Agency, testified about in Congress this week. Uh, the tragic reality is that we have lots of vulnerabilities with respect to the backbone, really, of our society. Um, most of us take it for granted that there will be power when we flip on the light switch. But the reality is there's a very complex, in fact, very delicate system that has been built over many years. It's kind of evolved uh, really over decades with very little thought given to its resiliency. A lot of effort made on reliability, but that's not the same thing. Resiliency speaks to the question of if people are determined to take it down, the electric grid, and with it in a cascading fashion, all of the other critical infrastructures upon which, well, life in 21st century America depends. They have a lot of options to do that. This cyber threat from China is particularly worrying because, as Admiral Rogers has testified, there's evidence that they've been into the control systems of our electric grid doing sort of reconnaissance to figure out how they work and the ways in which they could indeed turn them off. And if those control systems go off, as I say, we could very quickly, according to the testimony of Dr. William Graham, who studied this issue as the chairman of a threat commission for the Congress a few years back, nine out of 10 of us could die within a year if mm. the power goes out and stays out. But just to make this further point, even if no one attacks the grid, uh, either through cyber attacks or through physical sabotage or through something called an electromagnetic pulse attack, which is, I believe, a very real threat as well, especially coming to the topic we'll come to next, Iran, there is this other problem, and that is that the sun is going to afflict our grid at some point in the not-too-distant future with levels of electromagnetic energy that could be every bit as destructive as what these other attackers might use. So we have mm. got to be about the business of making our grid more resilient. Our society and lives depend upon it. A couple of minutes we have left here. You mentioned Iran. Three days to go until we get to the actual time period, the deadline for a deal to help defuse a lot of what is going on here. Everybody's walked away from the table right now. Is this Iran just playing for more time? Is this something that we should take seriously? Because we've seen these deadlines come and go by the dozens. Yeah. The Iranians have been playing for more time all along. That's really what these negotiations have been about as far as they're concerned. They've been rewarded for doing so already by having important sanctions that had been imposed upon them by the United Nations, no less, as well as the United States government. Some of them have been eased already. But the trouble is that all this while, I think there's no doubt that the Iranians have continued to beaver away, some of it in secret, towards this agenda that they've had for years, namely to acquire a nuclear weapons capability. Uh, whether this translates this latest um, you know, contretemps turns into uh, a suspension of the talks, which as far as I'm concerned would be the best outcome we could hope for, or simply extends the deadline a bit longer, which simply gives more time for more concessions to be made by the United States and the West. And I'm afraid that's what John Kerry is wrangling his uh, partners over right now. Then either way, we're going to wind up, I'm afraid, very soon with the legitimation of an Iranian nuclear weapon that will almost certainly be used, if not against our friends in Israel or other allies and interests in the region, quite possibly against us, and perhaps in that electromagnetic pulse version as an attack against our grid and society. Frank, I only got 20 seconds left, but I'll tell you, the way you're talking right now, it sounds like we will never get it through our thick, politically correct skulls that we can't trust one single word that anybody in the Iranian government says to us, no matter how many times we try. I couldn't improve on that. You're absolutely right. There we go. We're going to go ahead and put that on a T-shirt right now because maybe that's something we need to send out to the people in the Beltway to 
kind of take care of their next negotiation. Frank Gaffney, it's always Amen. a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so Thank much. You. We'll talk again. Good. Look All forward right. to it. Break, and we're back with the reasons why America is the World Cup. Many people in this country continue to say that we need to stop this. It's been going on for far too many decades, and we've got to stop being the policemen of the world. However, there are those who say that, quite frankly, if you want to stay peaceful, if you want to stay safe, that must never change. And at 51 minutes after the hour, those people we need to ensure are never inflicted upon an unsuspecting world. These are the people that we feel the need to bring to your attention every single chance we get careful, if you will, the residents of Outland. So much more coming right here on Midpoint.